you've been following along with the series, playlist in the cards now, we've just cleared the last key quest required to unlock the urgent quest to get into Four Star Village, which was the Snowbound Slider to hunt a Lagombi. Next up is Rathian. I'd recommend either Longsword or Hammer for this fight. The mobility and range of these weapons can help a lot, as otherwise you may struggle to hit her weak point without taking a tail to the face. Dual Blades and Sword and Shield are other weapons I'd recommend for similar reasons. If you want to make Rathian's armor, I suggest you use Longsword as it may make cutting the tail off a bit easier, which you'll want to do to increase your odds of getting Wrath Marrow and the Rathian plate that you'll need. Breaking her head is also important. I'll leave a link to Rathian's material drop chances in the description. For this hunt, I'll be using the War Mace Hammer with the Great Ragi armor set for poison negation and some fire resistance. Watch my Great Ragi video for more information about this armor. It should be in the cards now. You could use the Royal Ludroth armor if you want some stamina skills. It'll come at the cost of taking 20% more fire damage due to the elemental weakness of that armor, but if you can avoid her fireball and poison attacks, then you should just use that armor instead. Or you can ignore all of that and just use the attack boosting Great Jaggy set, maybe with Dash Juice. There are no wrong answers, though that one will also have the negative 20 fire resistance, like the Royal Ludroth armor. And making Dash Juice right now may fail since we don't have all the combo books yet.
This will be the last time I mention it. Remember to take items from the blue box. Rathian spawns on Area 8, and either goes to Area 6 or 9 nice. after a random amount of time. I start by going to Area 6 and slowly moving towards Area 7, just in case she goes there. I keep my camera pointed where she'd land. If the Jaggy slash Jaggy I ever break off and run away, I'll know she's coming here. Since she wasn't in Area 6, I assumed she was in Area 9. Since she's not here, I should have just ran back to 7. But this works too. Paintball the monster. They love to run away in this game, and can be hard to keep track of if they have wings. My main strategy for this matchup is to hit her head with the second level of the charge attack. Ideally as she's turning and facing a direction I can roll out of her direct line of sight from right after. There's a couple of attacks you need to look out for, but the main one is going to be her instant charge. I know this can be frustrating and feel really unfair, but this is something you can work around. Remember, you need to anticipate it. A couple of things to keep in mind. You'll get a feel for things eventually, so try not to get discouraged. And, you don't have to attack her weakest spot every time. Any safe attack you can land is progress. In my opinion, the best thing about this game not having health bars is that all you need to do is focus on the fight itself. Don't worry about, am I doing enough damage, or can I get this next stun, etc. Even in multiplayer, all you need to think about is avoiding damage and dealing your own when it's safe to do so. The old Monster Hunter games are endurance tests. Be patient with yourself and you'll succeed. Take breaks when you need to. The newer games with some fights in particular are hectic and insane by comparison, but right now you just need long-term focus. If you mess up the timing on a charge attack by missing level 2 and going to 3, you can still do the super pound as she turns around. Remember there's a shockwave. That was dumb of me. I just jumped the gun. She was aiming, so I knew it was coming, but starting the charge attack locked me in place for a moment. When she flies up, it's not a bad idea to sheath, and remember you probably want to run to her right side. Enough headshots and she goes down. From here you should do the triple pound, then a level 1 charge attack, then another triple pound. If she's coming here and this one gargoyle looks infused, it's because she's gonna kill it. She does this to eat it. You can interrupt the eating by hitting the gargoyle, but if you leave it alone, you'll get some free damage since Rathian will be busy. That was kind of a bad angle. I got lucky and staggered her, but you really want to have better timing in an angle where you can roll away easier. When Rathian becomes enraged, it's extremely common for her to jump back into a flight. I don't know if it's guaranteed. When Rathian is aiming, she can be very persistent. Don't jump the gun like I keep doing. See, even if I hit her, if I didn't stagger her, I was going to be hit. The timing can be hard to figure out, but you can hit her consistently enough and avoid being hit right after. Timing is very important, and your positioning and angle should be good as well.
Sometimes I'll preemptively roll because I'm anticipating an instant charge, and I end up getting smacked by her tail. Going towards her right side can avoid that. Lamau. Remember not to be too close to her head when she does that, but it's a good move to punish. Rathian is our first real step up in difficulty. Try and be patient and experiment to find what works best for you. Finally, let's talk about the Rathian armor. For either version of the Rathian armor, here's what you'll need. In low rank, here's how to obtain various materials from Rathian. I'll leave a link to this information in the description. When carving, you can get scales, shells, webbings, flame sacks, and spikes. Tail carves can be scales, spikes, marrow, or a plate. Capture rewards can be scales, shells, marrow, spikes, or plates. Breaking her head can get you shells, scales, or a plate. And breaking her wings can get you wrath talons, webbing, and wyvern claws. If you pick up a shiny, it can be a wyvern tear, a scale, a spike, or if you're really lucky, a rathian plate. The hard stuff to get will likely be wrath marrow and the coveted rathian plate, over the chest piece and waist respectively. In fact, because of the rathian plate, I recommend you either reconsider trying to farm for this armor, or try and get required materials after, say, 10 or so hunts, and if you don't get the plate, just move on. Remember to cut and carve her tail, break her head, and capture her for the highest chance to get a plate. If you ever need plates, you should try and wait until high rank, as the chances to get them from there are higher. All of the ore can be gathered from the volcano, which is found in the 4-star quest after defeating Rathian in the village urgent quest. Check higher up in the volcano for things like Dragonite and Firestone. You'll also get charms and rust stones. I'll cover them at a later time, though. The rust stones work similarly to how they did in Freedom Unite, if you're familiar with that, or if you want to watch the short I made covering it. I'll put it in the cards now. Monster Bone L can be carved from various large monsters or found in their quest rewards, monsters such as Baroth or Rathian. The Blade Master armor with no decorations has Health plus 20, Divine Blessing, and Recovery Speed minus 1. Health plus 20 is another one of those dead skills, since your max health is 150 and you can reach that eventually through the bath or using items. That being said, it's nice for convenience, and in the early game it's pretty good since you have less access to the health boosts that I've just mentioned. Divine Blessing is a pretty great skill. Whenever you're hit, there's a chance, I believe 25%, to greatly reduce how much damage you take. This can come in clutch, but even throughout normal play the damage reduction really adds up. Recovery Speed minus 1 refers to your red health. When you're hit by an enemy, part of the damage taken is turned into red health which will recover over time, turning into green health, as long as you don't get hit again. Getting hit again will subtract from your green health, and this process restarts. This negative skill will make it so your health recovers slower. In fact, your health will recover twice as slow. By default, you recover red health every 2 seconds. This skill changes that to 4. There's a couple of things about this skill and mechanic that you should know. In general, you almost never rely on red health recovery, and if you are, it's because you're using one of the positive skill effects that makes it faster, or an item that recovers it all immediately, like gourmet fish or yukimo eggs. Recovering health every 2 seconds just isn't practical in a hunt, and most red health is quote unquote lost by just taking a health potion. So this being a negative skill really isn't that terrible to have if you need to take it. However, 
You don't need to, since putting in a single recovery jewel will cancel the negative effect. The consideration for having or not having this skill is kind of a more advanced thing anyways. If you're at low health with a lot of red HP, you're either good enough to ignore it and recover over time, in which case you wouldn't want this negative skill, or you're about to die and need to heal right away, in which case having this negative skill doesn't really matter. Since we're still just starting out, it's not worth thinking about too much. On the topic of decorations, you also have plus 9 in the fire attack skill, and adding a blaze jewel will enable that skill, which will boost the amount of fire elemental damage your weapon will deal. If, and only if, your weapon already has fire attack on it. Not a bad skill to have for faster attacking weapons. Through some light testing, it seems like this may also affect bowgun flaming shots. Also, the health plus 20 can be turned into health plus 50 by just adding one vitality jewel. This is quite good for newer players as you won't have to go to the hot spring every hunt for a health boost, though you should get into the habit of doing that eventually. However, this set has 5 slots in total, and whenever you have at least 5 slots, you're able to activate one of the skills that only needs 5 decorations. There are a handful of 1 slot jewels that give 2 skill points each. Equipping 5 instead of the usual 10 that you would need will activate a skill. The most generally useful one for Blade Master would be Speed Sharpening, using 5 Grinder Jewels. But there are others. Some that you can use right now, like Stun Resistance, and others that will only be accessible later on, like Divine Protection. If you want a good defense-focused armor set that looks pretty good, this isn't a bad choice. The only problem is, again, trying to get a plate in low rank. I'd recommend you skip this one, and I won't be using it in any future hunts due to how difficult it can be to get. I'd rather not recommend something that could be frustrating. The gunner armor is more or less the same as the Blade Master one, at least in terms of armor skills, so all of the information covered for that one will apply here. With 4 3 decorations, you can get health plus 50, divine blessing, and fire attack plus 1. Decent if you want to use fire damage as a gunner, and divine blessing will help out a lot too. You have 5 open slots, and if you don't go for what the armor basically wants you to get, then you can use 5 factory jewels for example to get another useful skill. The factory jewels activate combo plus. If you've played Freedom Unite, you'll know this skill as Bullet Limit and why it's so useful for any gunner. When crafting ammo, often you'll have a chance to craft between one value and another. For example, Normal Shot Level 2 can make between 1 and 3 every time you combine a Huskberry and a Needleberry. Having Combo Plus will guarantee that you will always make the max amount of ammo from combining. Using the previous example, you'll always make 3. Depending on what ammo you're using and whether or not you even need to make more ammo in a hunt, this skill can be extremely useful if only to make things more consistent. Though, just like speed sharpening, it's not completely necessary. I'll only ever be taking into consideration what slots slash skills are available for the armor, but if you have weapon or charm decoration slots and skills on a charm that are useful, then feel free to include them, but due to the variable nature of that, I won't be including them in these sections. Now that Rathian has been defeated, a lot has changed. We've been promoted and can take on 4 star village quests, and you'll notice that many villagers will have something to say to you. Be sure to talk to anyone with a speech bubble above their head. The general store has 4 new items that we will absolutely be acquiring at one point or another. A new book of combos to increase our combined success rate, an organizer guide which will give us extra space in our item box, pretty low priority at the moment, and finally the power and armor charms, which you should get as soon as you possibly can. These expensive items will buff your attack and defense as long as they're in your inventory. Consider it a permanent upgrade at the cost of 2 inventory slots. Very important. Save up to 60,000 to buy them both and always take them on hunts. If you want some quick cash, consider selling some extra monster parts that you don't need anymore. Ideally ones that you don't think would be annoying to get again. I'll refrain from acquiring these items until we enter the next tier of village quests, but you should seriously get these as soon as you can. You won't regret it. She also sells some more ammo types, which can be useful for gunners. Buying ammo is very convenient, though if you can buy the materials to craft them from the traveling peddler, it should be cheaper, which can be a consideration if you want to stockpile them. Otherwise, you can just buy ammo as you need it and craft the ones you can't buy. The farm manager can now upgrade the farm with Fishing Pier plus 2, Mining Point plus 1, The Mining Cart, the standard beehive upgrade, and the marathon regime upgrade for training felines. You should acquire all these eventually, the mining point and cart and honey ones are particularly important and useful. The blacksmith hands you three armor sphere pluses, these are used to upgrade your armor. You can also upgrade weapons with armor spheres. For the purposes of the guide series, I won't be upgrading gear like this until late game, but you should absolutely feel free to do so if you would like. Having more attack and defense can really help you get through some of the tougher content, so don't shy away from it too much. But also, try and avoid doing it in the early game where you'll be replacing gear so quickly that it won't be as useful in the long run. It's your call. The Peddler hands you a Sword Codex, which is used to craft the Chak Chak Sword and Shield. 
We have also unlocked the hot spring quest, Hidden Permafrost, to hunt two great baggies, which will upgrade the hot spring. I'll cover that quest after I've covered Great Baggy. And of course, most importantly, we get praised by Mommy Village Chief. She lets us know that we can now access the volcano, and we should bring cold drinks when we go there. Take her advice. She'll also give us five Yukimo eggs. Things are going to get more challenging and complex from here, but we'll also unlock better and more useful equipment to help us along. Don't get discouraged. Take things as slow as you need to, and remember to take breaks if you start getting frustrated. Remember to try different strategies if what you're doing doesn't seem to be working. Maybe a different weapon would suit the fight better, for example. We now have access to more monsters. Fierce monsters. Up next, there's Nibble Snarf. <laughs> yeah, wow, they just called him that, huh? That's, that's messed up. Great Baggy, Giganox, and Volvodon. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.